Good morning, good afternoon, based upon where you're located. This is uh, Sir Blumenthal. We're going to get started in about 30 seconds here on the 2022 R3 release for Sage Intact. Got a couple last people joining. Awesome. The last person said, put their name in. So perfect. Well, I want to welcome everyone today to Ethosystems uh, um, 2022 R3 release overview. Uh, we got a great presentation here presented by Olivia Romer, who is one of our senior consultants here at um, Ethosystems for the Sage Intact product. Um, from a logistics point of view, um, if you want to just hit the next slide there quickly, Olivia. Um, so the presentation is going to be about 30 to 45 minutes. All the phone lines are muted, unfortunately, just to cut down the background noise. So if you do have any questions, please type them into the questions feature on there. I will be monitoring this as Olivia is doing the presentation today. And last but not least, if you want a copy of the presentation with the slot, the um, with the screenshots and the uh, the notes, uh, be happy to send that out. Just put your email address in the um, questions um, feature on the screen, and um, I'll be sending those out a little bit later today. So without any further ado, since everyone's time is valuable, I want to turn it over to Olivia to have her uh, go over all the really cool changes they've added on the uh, R3 release coming out tomorrow, um, this Friday. Thank you, Stuart. Hello, everyone. T so today we're going to go over all the new features that are available in R3, which will be released tomorrow, like Stuart said. And then we'll have, we'll review some of the questions and I will give you answers to those questions. Okay, so first up is the updated user interface. So you will notice some things in regards to advances that have been changed. They've made it a little bit more of a robust feature. So you can add AP advances um, with a little bit more clarity as how they're getting applied, uh, how they're getting created, and so on and so forth. So you can track by the state of the advance. So whether it's posted, it's voided, it's pending, et cetera. View how much is remaining to apply of that advance. You can add uh, new ones and view those as well. You can create custom views for the advances. So this is one of the standard views that you're going to see here for the advance. But you can create your own custom views as well, like you can in all the other list screens within Sage Intact. And then you also have the ability to use advanced filters, again, similar to the other list screens within Sage Intact. Okay, so within the advances themselves, you'll see some new features. So if you have a multi-currency environment, you will see some additional fields related to multi-currency, things like uh, the rate type, the exchange rate dates, and the exchange rate itself, as well as the transaction currency. So if it's different than the default, uh, currency that you have, then you can change that and then it will use the appropriate information to do that exchange rate calculation. You also have the ability to add attachments to your advances now. So if you have any sort of backup, you want to keep with that advance, advance, accounts payable advance, you now have the ability to do so. You can post or put these items into draft. So either one will work and then you have additional options under more actions where you can change the layout of these screens and the type of information that is shown. So similar to the other data entry windows, if you wanted to edit the entries layout, you definitely can through the more actions button. Okay, also within here, you will now see these two tabs here, uh, the ones laid at our labeled two and three. Basically within the advance itself, you will now see the posting details of that advance. And you will also be able to see the bills that it was applied towards. So in this screen here, I'm showing you which bills are having the advance applied to. Again, this gives a little bit more visibility into how an advance has been used or applied. And so it makes it a lot easier. In the past, it wasn't very 
uh, it was sometimes difficult to figure out how an advance was applied. This gives you more of that visibility. You can also duplicate an advance. So if a, uh, you're doing the same type of advance over and over for a vendor, then you can duplicate an existing one and it will pull in the same information from that advance, you know, who the vendor is, the coding of that, et cetera, so you don't have to re-enter that information. Okay, inside accounts payable, you will now be able to view the attachments within the same screen. So it opens up a side-by-side -side window as displayed here. So when I am in the bill itself, if there is an attachment in the attachments area of the bill, I will see that right next to it, which you see here. So this is a nice feature. And obviously if you wanted to, you could close this, but it's nice that now you can see the bill information and the actual bill itself within the same screen. All right, in accounts receivable, a few changes were made here. So if a customer has just one open invoice, it will automatically load that invoice when you apply payments because the assumption is that's the only invoice that they have outstanding and therefore that must be the one that you want to pay. To pay. Um, however, if you need to make changes to that, you can. Um, also, you can configure how you want to automatically apply payments within the received payments page. So that has added some advanced um, visibility there. They've also changed some of the field titles as well within the screens. So now the receipt date, that has been changed to the date received and the date field has been changed to invoice date. Again, just to add a little bit more clarity on what those fields are used for. And then you will also see a new statement date field, and this allows for custom statements to be sent with the accounts receivable statement function. And it will also appear in the print email statements page uh, within the software as well. Okay, within cash management, you also have the ability to automatically create credit card transactions for reconciliation. So within cash management, you'll go to setup and reconciliation transaction templates, and they look something like this. And what this is, is you can create various rules so that if it is from this vendor or this amount or this uh, particular expense account that it gets uh, created and it gets reconciled for you. So if you have any questions on that, we would be happy to help you set up these templates to help streamline your reconciliation of credit cards. All right. Within construction, you will see a new function that says primary document workflow. So within that, it is a way for you to be able to see which is the originating document. So this is very useful in regards to commitments, so purchase orders and subcontract documents. And then you would be able to see how those uh, original items link up to the change orders and then the subsequent vendor invoices as well. Um, this will go back once activated, this will go back to all your previous um, subcommitment commitment documents and it will link up all invoices and change orders that were related to those. So it'll go back and do an update if you decide to activate this primary document workflow. Um, we do recommend it because it will streamline some of the reporting within Sage Intact as it relates to these types of items. Okay, you will now be able to duplicate your construction project contracts within Sage Intact. That means not only the contract, but also the line items within the contract as well. So no more creating a new one and then typing all the 
field information in manually, you would be able to duplicate all that information and then change any necessary fields, like perhaps the amount is the only thing that is different. You will also now be able to import your contract, your project contracts as well. So that is the contract itself as well as the lines. So both of those pieces can now be imported and you can import multiple contracts within one import file. So if you had, let's say 10 progress billing contracts that you wanted to create, the schedule of values for within Sage Intact Construction, you would now be able to create those all in one import file and it will set up the 10 different contracts as well as the schedule of values associated with each contract. So again, helping you kind of streamline that workflow going forward. All right, also in R3, there are new role-based dashboards that have been created. So what we mean by that is, for example, accounts payable, Sage went through many customers and tried to find the items that were most relevant to the roles that they created these specific dashboards for. So they tried to pick certain reports, certain data points, certain tasks and alerts that they felt across the board were most relevant to users of this role and then created these dashboards. And these dashboards can be added for you. Um, as long as you're using the quick start templates, you would be able to use these dashboards right away. You would just need to add them to your dashboards menu and then assign them to the appropriate users within your organization. And then they would be able to use these new dashboards. Okay, uh, within General Ledger, you have the ability to restrict users with dynamic allocations and um, restrictions per entity are now retained. So if you are using dynamic allocations, you have in further enhancements there. And you also can allocate things per employee and per project now. Um, within the allocation enhancement or, or is part of the dimension allocations within Sage Intact. So employee and project are now available for you to use as dimension values to allocate within General Ledger. Within order entry, you now have the ability to track details on invoices and returns. So where things are throughout that process, you can track all of that individual information onto either an invoice uh, document or a return document, all that detail as far as where that is can be listed now on those document templates. You can also distribute um, entity level subtotals and that is used uh, for the simple tax, um, for sales tax within order entry. And you can now set dimension values for the subtotals at the top level. So if there are certain dimensions that you want things to subtotal by, you would now be able to do that and it would display in this manner on your invoices and your invoice documents as well. Within purchasing, similar to order entry, you are able to do that entity level subtotals for simple tax. Again, that's related to sales tax. And you are also able to set up uh, dimensions in order to subtotal um, at the top level. 
So that applies to both order entry and to purchasing as well. All right, a couple additional enhancements. Again, these are label changes. So you might notice some of the verbiage within the software has changed. So now previously you would have seen pay um, in advance and posted advances. It is now AP advances and you would be able to list, view, add, edit, void, and delete. Now these are the items within security. So the security has changed for this enhancement with the accounts payable advancements. Also payment date has changed to advance date. Payment amount is now payment transaction amount and payment state has been, just been changed to state instead. Uh, there are new page tours for accounts payable and for the, bill, the bills page and the pay bills page. So what the page tours are is they are interactive tools that have been created within Sage Intact for new users of the software. So it gives them an overview of where to navigate, what each of the windows mean within the software, how things can be used, and it's almost like a quick tutorial guide for new users. So this again has been created for the accounts payable bills and pay bills pages within the software. It also links some support articles that might be beneficial to a new user of these two pages. And it also gives them um, additional articles that might be beneficial for them on specific things too. So something great for new users, a really nice feature within the software and additional page tours will be added in the software. So keep an eye out for those in the future. All right, so that is everything that has changed within R3 of Sage Intact. Um, please note that we have some additional webinars that are gonna be coming up. So on the 25th, we have GC Pay for Sage Intact. So the link is here in order to sign up for that. Um, webinar, <clears throat> as well as smart rules. And then we also have some timesheet tips and tricks for you all. So take a note of these webinars and make sure you sign up so you don't miss any of this excellent information. And now we have um, time for Q&A. So one question that came in while um, this was happening was, is that they, uh, they asked, how is the update applied tomorrow night? So go ahead. Yes, so um, it is automatic. So usually in the off hours, it is automatically updated for you. So there is nothing that you need to do. The software will just update itself, usually in the off peak hours. Perfect, yeah. And uh, if you have any issues on, on Monday, which I, I've been through now 40 releases, I, I have not seen many issues at all. But if you do have any, please let us know. Um, obviously, put a support case in with us um, ASAP and we'll make sure it's addressed um, right away. That was all the that was the only question that came, they came in. So um, we'll um, just a couple other things we'll do is by the end of the year we'll have the obviously the r4 release that will come out in november and then we'll do one more we're going to do one more um, webinar near in december on year-end processing so those dates haven't been set yet but those will be our um, near the end of the year webinars we have if anyone's got any other questions uh please feel free to ask them otherwise really want to appreciate everyone uh join today and more importantly thank you Olivia for putting this together um, done a great job so really appreciate it thank you Stuart thank you everyone thank you